All right, we are going to get started looking at the longest git commit in the world, which is uh, not a scientific description of what I'm about to do. There may perhaps be longer git commits than this, but this is what I'm going to stick with for now. So what we're going to do is go through some of the plumbing commands that we have in Git and uh, use them to actually create a Git commit um, manually, basically. We're going to use the plumbing commands and kind of see what happens behind the scenes when we do Git add and Git commit. And uh, we're going to do it all uh, piece by piece. And along the way, we're going to learn a lot about how Git works. This is one of my favorite demos to do when I teach uh, Git in person because it comes right after I uh, talk about like what I call the pieces of Git. So I'm just kind of looking at some of my notes here. You know, we have a blob, which is how Git stores things. There's a blob, there's a tree. You can think of a blob as a file. And then there's a tree, which you can think of as a, uh, you know, stru a directory structure. And then there's the commit, which takes the entire uh, project tree and captures the change. So we're going to look at uh, those different pieces of Git as we work through these plumbing commands. So uh, the first thing I want to do is fire up my terminal here. And what we're going to do is first create a project. So we're going to do this all from scratch. So let's say uh, I'm going to create a, a project called Plumber. Let's just pretend I'm creating a website for a plumber or an application for a plumber. And in this case, uh, I'm calling it this because these commands we're going to use are called the plumbing commands. And in Git, there's the porcelain commands, which are the stuff that we use every single day on, from the command line. Uh, you know, git commit, git push, git pull, stuff like that. And then there's the plumbing commands, which are the under the hood commands that some of those porcelain commands call, but also what uh, was used originally in Git when it was first being developed uh, by the Linux kernel team, they had this sort of like, you know, really uh, basic set of commands that they would have to use to, to piece everything together. And eventually they were kind of wrapped up into some more user-friendly commands. So, uh, as you can see, like porcelain, if you think about, you know, what we're referring to here is like a, a toilet and then plumbing is all the stuff under, in, in the side of that that you don't really care about and don't see. As long as you can interface with the toilet as you need, then everything is good. And that's kind of the same idea here. So we're going to make a directory here called plumber. And this is going to be our project. So it's going to be where we're going to create our repository. So we'll initialize this repository creating an empty repository right inside of Plumber. All right, so if I look at this, you can see I have my .git directory. And if I look at that, you can see that this is what is inside of a .git directory. This is all the stuff that Git uses to track the repository, to make the repository work. And we're going to look at a lot of these here in a few minutes. Um, but or we're actually look at some of these. We'll probably mostly look at. We'll play with head a little bit, and uh, I'm not sure if we'll maybe look at objects too. But we're gonna kind of mess around here as we go. All right. So this is our Git directory. We're actually going to um, have to to work inside of here. So before we move forward, I just want to cat head here. Oops. I need to get inside of the Git directory. There we go. So I want to cat head just so you can see. That head is, you know, the basically pointing at the current um, state of the repository, which is at this master branch. We're actually in detached right now because we don't have any commits. Um, but uh, we're, you know, it's pointing at uh, refs heads master at this point. So this is how Git stores what head is. So let me clear this, and we're going to continue on with our uh, commit. Let's see. All right. So the first thing I want to do is back out of here, 
and then I'm gonna create my first file. So I'll just create like an indexed file, let's just say here for this thing, and uh, we'll just call it the Tomer project. So this could be any code, right? HTML is just really simple to write, pretty universal, but this could be uh, Ruby code, PHP code, whatever, it doesn't matter, just that we have a file here that we're gonna work with. All right, so we'll save that. Now, normally we would do something like git add index.html to add that to uh, our staging area in the repository. But in this case, we're going to not use those porcelain commands and instead we're going to use the uh, plumbing commands. And so the first thing we need to do is actually hash this uh, object. We actually, or ha we have to take this file and hash it by creating an and creating the object. So we do git hash object, this is a plumbing command, minus w, and this tells git to write the object. If we did it without that, it wouldn't write it, it would just return what the object, would, what the hash would be, w, and then the file that we want to hash, or the object that we want to hash. In this case, index.html. So we do that and we get back a hash. And this hash is the ID of the object. And it's, it's an SHA1 hash of the contents of this file. And it's only the content, so it's not using the file name, like index.html, as part of that, just the contents. And that's why if you have, if you've ever noticed in Git, if you have the same files with the same contents, Git actually only has to store those one time. So it's very in, in, uh, efficient in that way. If I created another file with the same contents and then hashed it, it would have the same exact hash. In fact, if you were following along and you, you know, vimmed index.html and you just added this h1 exactly like it is right here at the top, and then you hashed that using git hash object and then the file name, you, would, you should get the same exact hash. So what we have here now should be a blob, this, what we just created with hash object, we should have a blob as far as git is concerned. And I can check using git cat file. And what cat file does is it provides information about repository objects. And do minus T to get the type. And I could put in the, I don't have to put in the whole hash, it's just easier in this case. Um, I can just put in the, the hash and it returns the type, which is blob. So now I know that we have created a blob in our repository. All right, so this is just the first step of what we would usually do with add. So now I want to, uh, well, let me, let's talk about trees for a second because we're about to do a tree. So I'm gonna back out, actually, I'll just go and yeah, let me actually back out of this and go into the commits project. This is just another project I have as a sample project. And if I do git cat file minus p master, oops, up arrow and then tree. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling git to return the tree object to which the master branch is currently pointing, which is based on the last commit and we specify the master branch and that we want the tree object. And when we do that, we get this kind of interesting listing here of the, uh, the type here. We have blob, tree, tree, blob, the hash, and the actual you know, uh, file system uh, equivalent of that, which is you know, these different files right here. The files don't make a difference. We're just trying to uh, show what uh, you know, what this looks like if we're looking at Git a little bit more under the hood. Um, if anyone, if there's anyone in the chat, I uh, don't have it open right this second, and you wanna chime in whether you've used any plumbing commands, you can chime in yes or no on that. And we can uh, discuss that some more if there's any questions. So if we wanna view, let's say we have these style sheets here, right? This is a directory, it's showing up as a tree. Well, a tree is made up of um, other trees and blobs. 
So if I run git cat file on this, minus p, and the hash, you, you, should, you can now see that I get what's inside of that tree, which is three blobs, which are just these three CSS files right here. And that's what we, that's what we get back. So this tree object here, right here, is then pointing to this, these three blobs. And these are the CSS files. All right, so that's kind of idea of how like a tree works and looks. So with that in mind, let's back up. We're gonna go into our plumber project again. So we had already created a blob and now we need to create a tree. And we're gonna create a tree for the whole project. But, um, but first what I wanna do is I want to uh, stage some files right now so we have something that we can I remember mean, I've already hashed this, but now I want to stage it so Git has something that I can create a tree from. All right, so let's create another file really quick. We'll just create about HTML and just do about plumber project. And we'll just save that. So we're keeping it really simple here. All right, so we have that. Um, and what we can do now is use a command called update index, like this. So it's going to take the index, which is the index is what Git uses to track the difference between, uh, it basically it, what it's tracking, the files that it's tracking, and it takes the file system and its, um, and the objects that are saved, and the index helps it track the differences between those. So git update index, we use the add option, and then we're gonna do about.html and index.html. So now we've updated our index, and we've essentially staged these files. So if I do a git status, oops, you can see we have two new files of about and index. Now, if I wanted to, I could also do git hash object about.html, and that returns the hash here. If I do git status, we should still see that we have these two new files that we've now staged using update index add, which is one of our plumbing commands. Now I want to write the tree to the git repository, and the tree is going to be the entire repository, the project. So the project tree would be from the root of where you've initialized the repository all the way down to everything that's included. And we're gonna write that tree. This is just like we did with, you know, write, uh, when we created the object, we'll write the tree and then we get a hash back there because it created a tree object. Now if I look in here, if I do git cat file minus p and then the hash, you can see that returns what's inside of that tree. And that tree is pointing to two blobs, which is the about file and the index file that we created. All right, so Let's go ahead and make a directory, let's say for some uh, JavaScript. So we'll make a directory called JavaScript. And then inside of there, we'll just create, um, you know, our site JavaScript. So we'll say, you know, this is, we'll say this is our JavaScript file and we'll save it. So now we have this simple JavaScript file and if I run git status on that, you can see that it's showing up as this being untracked. But I can add it We're using git update index, add js site.js. Now it's been added. 
hit status, and you can see we have, now have these three that are ready to be committed. So again, our tree has changed. Don't worry about where it says new file, new file, new file. We've, we've actually created, we've actually written the tree object already. Um, this whole new file thing will, will go away here soon. So we've already, um, now we have to actually update that tree object because the tree itself has changed. So we need to do git write tree. Not three, tree, there we go. And we get a new hash. And if we look here when the last time we wrote tree, let's just find that. It was right here, so it was, this was our hash right here. And as you can see, we get a completely different hash now because the contents of the tree have changed because we added a, another tree, a directory, and another blob. And then when it's hashing based on the contents of the tree, then of course it's going to change. So we have an entirely different hash because the, the whole project itself changed. All right, now, if I do git cat file minus p and I go in and look at that tree, you can see that the tree now has our two blobs and another tree. And if I cat file that, you can see that that will then show me what's inside of the tree object, which is the blob. That's what it points to is the blob. So we're kind of breaking down our project in terms of how Git looks at it, which is in terms of trees and blobs. All right, so now we want to commit the changes that we have in the index, create our commit objects, and we do that using a command called commit tree. Keep writing three. Uh, commit three, and this is another plumbing command, and we need to pass in the hash of the tree that we created right here. Remember when we just wrote the tree, which is the entire project? So we say git commit tree, pass in the hash of the tree, add a message, adding first commit, or what we all usually do is initial commit, something like that, and hit enter. And now what we've done is we've said commit this tree, and we passed in the hash of the tree object, which is our entire project with all the changes up to this point. And then we've gotten back a hash for the commit object itself. So where are we at now, right? Like if we had just created a commit, then this would now be, uh, you know, we'd be done. I'd run git status and this would say like, you know, no changes, you have a clean working directory. But in fact, it shows that I still have changes to be committed, which is not true because I've committed that tree. So this is, um, this is a problem because we wanna clear this up, but we haven't told Git to do that yet. And the problem here is that head and the branch have not been updated to include the new commit that we just created. So this is um, called a dangling commit, and it's one that doesn't belong into any branch. And because we're using all of these plumbing commands, we're doing this all manually, we have to do that part manually too. So we're gonna fix that by adding it to the master branch that we're working from, and then this will clear the staging area and then allow us to see um, the commit in our git log output. So what Git does is it stores its branch information in the refs directory. And I think we peeked at that earlier. So we need to um, edit or create the, uh, let's see, dot git refs heads master, and then point this, point it to the, the, the glass commit, which is this one right here, this hash that was returned. So if I, so I created it, and we'll just paste it in. It's, it's literally just a text file like that. There's really not much, not really much fancy about it. All right, so we opened that. And now, if I run git status, 
now you see it's actually updated because we told via refs heads master, we told it the last commit, which is the last saved change to the project tree in our um, project, in our repository. We pointed it to it and then Git takes that and matches it against when we run Git status, it says, what is head pointed to? And what is the current you know, uh, state of the repository? Are they the same? Then we're, we have nothing to commit and we have a clean working tree. So now if I run git log, and you can also see that we've changed here. I have this output of the current branch. It's gone from an asterisk, which means a dangling commit to um, the actual branch. And if I run git log, I actually now see the commit itself, which we just created manually uh, using all of these different plumbing commands. So this isn't really a practical way of, of working with git, um, but it is nice to see how things work under the hood. And uh, if you want to check out some other things, I have some articles on my site about working with Git. Um, I have a course called Git Under the Hood. And of course, right above me, there's a link to the Git Essentials course, which has you know all of your fundamentals, Git, some more advanced stuff, and also this uh, a lot of this Git Under the Hood material in a lot more depth. But the key here is to, you know, but when we learn more about what Git does underneath, a lot of what we see in Git starts to make more sense. As an example, this commit message, right? If you ever run Git log and you see this, you know, big long um, uh, sequence of numbers and letters, you're probably wondering what that is. Well, that's a hash that's uh, based on, you know, hashing the project tree with all the changes in this commit. And this is a really efficient way for Git to work. And once you get into things like, you know, branching, so if I did Git branch, um, let's say develop, and I check out develop. So what Git does, is it, it doesn't copy, you know, all of the uh, files into like a new directory. Like if you've ever used Subversion, it doesn't copy everything into a new directory. It just points at this commit. That's all it does. So. And once you start getting into Git, you'll start to realize that it's it's actually just pointing to commits. Um, a tag is just pointing to a commit. Um, so if I did, you know, if I created like a, a, a Git tag, and um, you know, right at this point in the project, the tag would be pointing at at this commit commit right here. Um, if I did a Git status, you can see it's on the develop branch. Nothing to commit. If I did a git log here, of course, you'll see that we have uh, this uh, commit is our only commit, which means that the, the develop branch is pointed at this one. So everything is really just pointing at commits. Um, even uh, so a git, uh, let's say a git tag, a git branch, those are pointing at commits. When we start to do things like uh, revert stuff, we always revert at the commit level. Um, if I do a git merge, let me actually, let me just uh, vim this index file and we will, uh, let's just create a little bit of a change here. Just like this. Doesn't really matter what it is. All right, so now if I run git status, you can see I have modified this. And we're gonna do it the old way here. We'll, we'll add it and we'll commit it. Oops, let me properly do that. There we go. All right, so now if I do a git status, again, it's clean working tree, a git log will show me, you know, where we've now deviated away from the master branch. And if I check out master and then do git merge develop, like this, and I'm gonna do, go fast forward, so we get a merge commit. All right, there we go, so we've done the merge. Now if I do a git log on master, you can see we have our initial commit. We have the commit where I changed the index file on the develop branch, and then we have a merge commit 
you can see that it's showing what it's merging together here, 96867EB, which is this, and B4F259F, which is this, and it actually is creating its own commit because those two things coming together then changes the, um, the tree object and sort of hashing it again and creating uh, a new commit based on the state of it in the master branch. But of course the, uh, the develop branch, if I check out develop and then log that out, you can see the develop branch is pointed to this one. And you know, we can even go into, um, if I go into the git directory and I go into refs and you look at it, you see there's heads and tags. If I go into heads, you can see I have two heads for develop and master for each of the branches I have. And if I look at, I could just actually just vim it too if I wanted to, if I put in develop, you can see that the hash that's in that head, which is telling us the uh, where, the, the at which commit develop is, is currently at, it is that B4F259. And we know if we log out here, you can see it's this latest commit, right? So that's what it's pointing at. If in develop, I decided that I want to, um, do I have a, yes. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing here. I gotta back out. All right, so now if I vim like about, and I just change something here like this and save it. Just wanna make sure I alter the tree, the project tree. And we see that, I commit it. Uh, whoops, I have to uh, add it first, sorry about that. Let me just do it all in one here. There we go, git commit. All right, so now we've added it and committed it with a message. And now if I log it, you can see in my develop branch, I now have this hash, which is D8B284 right here. And again, if I go into dot git refs heads, and then I, I can just cat uh, develop, you can see that it is this same one. So it updated what it's pointing to. And that's, you know, what we did earlier is we just manually did that, but now uh, we can do that all, uh, we, we see how Git is actually working because we were able to manually do it. We now see what Git is doing behind the scenes as we are just sitting here, you know, using our nice uh, porcelain commands. All right, so this is the, uh, the rundown on the really the, the longest git commit in the world, how to do it step-by-step step using the plumbing commands. Um, this is a lot of fun. I enjoy teaching this type of stuff because we, um, we, we learn a lot about git in the process. So when I'm teaching about how git works and the different pieces of git, uh, I always show this part and you would never ever work like this, but it's really helpful uh, to know. And you know, as an example, if I uh, went into um, you know, my about file and I just changed this, right? So I do a status and I have it modified, but I don't want to commit it. So I'm going to use, you know, a stash. So, um, changed about title. So now we just stashed this. So I do git stash. You can see I, I have my stash here. Now the interesting thing about a stash is that a stash is actually a commit object like any other commit. It's just the difference is that the head isn't pointed to it. So when you're creating a stash, you're actually just creating a commit. So let me just quickly show you how that works. So if we go into the dot git, refs, and then we just look at stash. You can see that stash is pointing to C6B5CE6, and that's just the, it's just the commit object. 
which is just not, doesn't have anything being pointed to it. But if I go back in now, and let me just back out here. And if I go here and I look at my get status, I don't have anything, but I do git apply stash. Oops, probably should reverse those, but the command first, and then the sub command. There we go, git stash apply. So now I've applied that. And I can say git um, commit changed about title and log it out. And here is our commit object, our hash. Now I'm curious if this would be the same 6651A6 as it was before. If I scroll up, so it looks like it was different. So it's probably. Um, creating a object with a tree. It must be doing it slightly differently. I thought they might be the same, but they are not. All right, regardless, you can see that a stash is just a, a commit object as well. And uh, everything is actually just pointing to commit objects. You know, if we branch, um, when we merge, um, if we ever are uh, reverting a merge, we're actually gonna pass in a hash as well to because we're pointing we want to revert a specific commit, basically. Um, if we are talking about a, uh, a, a tag as well, that's also pointing to a commit, the tag is just pointing to a commit as well. All right, so those are uh, just the basics of, of how to do some behind the scenes stuff in Git. And uh, if you are interested in learning more, I mean, definitely check out the Git Essentials course. It's basically the same thing that I uh, teach in person except uh, you know, obviously not with me teaching it in person. So if you wanna check it out, uh, taught that stuff um, at all sorts of uh, cool places and you can um, go to majingo.com slash git dash essentials to learn about that. All right, thanks for uh, joining me in this one. We will uh, see you guys in the, the next uh, video.